Welcome back to the lab. Today we're going to talk about one design choice that reduces stress on components in a circuit, prevents latch up in ICs, and limits inrush current. This awesome tactic is called soft start. To introduce the concept of soft start, I've prepared a simple simulation. This simulation serves to demonstrate the difference between two options. The two options are turning something on really, really fast or turning something on in a slow and controlled way. The key word in that sentence is control. And let's start by walking through the simplified schematic I created for UNLT Spice. Like we mentioned, this schematic is designed to be a simple example which demonstrates the design compromises made when implementing power switch circuits. The design challenge is creating a circuit that switches 12 volts DC to another device whether that be an external device that requires power, a daughter board that can be hot plugged. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna have to stop myself here before I go down the rabbit hole. Let's summarize that huge list by saying that there are a lot of scenarios where this design challenge pops up. Switched power to an external device is everywhere. In this case, we're assuming that whatever load board or device being powered has 470 microfarads of capacitance attached. This is a significant quantity of bulk, above average for sure, but not unreasonable, impossible, or impractical by any means. Deciding how much bulk capacitance is required for a circuit is really an optimization thing. In general, we would typically want to add more bulk to a circuit to reduce ripple on a power supply due to load transients or switching behaviors. In many cases, an infinite quantity of capacitance would be ideal for this sort of function. The reason why we don't design every board with massive capacitors on it to get as close to infinite bulk as possible is because there's usually cost, space, and turn on time requirements that require compromise here. Ideal circuits are easier to think about conceptually, but truly ideal behavior isn't usually necessary to get the job done. We walked through an example of this in our buck converter deep dive when we sized our input and output capacitance to keep our output and input voltage ripple reasonable. We have developed two circuits to demonstrate the required switching function, connecting the 12 volt rail to our mostly capacitive load. These two circuits are shown on the right and left sides of this diagram, mirrored about the center of the schematic. I've built the fast switch on the left, and this circuit is relatively simple when compared to a soft start implementation. Let's start here. The high side switch energizes the load as quickly as possible without care or concern for how much current is flowing. You may be thrown off by the small inductor shown here, and this inductor is modeling the trace inductance of a four inch long trace with a ground plane 10 mils or 10 thousandths of an inch below it. This is added to provide the fast switch as close to a best case scenario as we can afford without being unrealistic. This small inductance will resist the immediate changes in current and smooth things out a bit, and very slightly. I mean, barely measurable changes, but this will reduce the peak inrush current if only barely. Realistically speaking, this small of an inductor doesn't really affect the result of our simulation, so it really could be removed. The main reason why it's still here is because if the circuit were on my board instead of on my computer, that inductance would really be present, and I wanted to include it here since it made it look a little better. Anyways, moving on from this totally relevant side conversation about trace inductance, we have a nearly ideal switch here, and this is meant to represent what would happen if we closed a relay contact or turn on a MOSFET as fast as possible. As we run the simulation and observe the behavior of this circuit, we see that after the switch closes, the voltage increases incredibly rapidly. The output voltage rises to 10 volts almost instantly and settles to 12 after less than 5 milliseconds. How does this compare to the slow output? Well, let's start by making sure that we understand the function of each component in this relatively complex circuit. What exactly is going on here? The circuit uses a FET, op amp, reference voltage, and current sense shunt resistor. The shunt resistor is a small value resistor that's used to create a voltage that increases proportionally with current. The voltage measured across this shunt is compared to the reference voltage, so that when the output voltage is too low, the FET is adjusted to pass more current. When the output current is too high, the FET is turned off just a little bit. This circuit, we are actually using our field effect transistor as a voltage controlled current source or variable resistor, and we aren't saturating the FET so it's not behaving like a switch, but rather a variable resistor. In other words, we're operating the FET in the triode region. By using the op amp to compare the output current translated in the voltage, which is then capable of driving the FET while establishing negative feedback, 
we have implemented a linear current regulation circuit. It's important that the current set point is adjusted such that it's higher than the maximum operating current of the load being powered. If too much current's powered from this circuit, it'll start to fold back the output voltage and go into a current regulating mode. While this could cause some headaches if not sized appropriately, this action may be a desired feature if surviving extreme fault conditions is required for your application. This constant overcurrent protection could prevent short circuit faults on a daughter card from browning out a mainboard or taking down the system completely, though it isn't all roses and sunshine. There's a bit more work to be done before we can put this on our board. Like we mentioned before, this is a linear current regulation circuit, which means it's not terribly efficient. The linear regulating action of this circuit means that the FET will dissipate a bit more power during turn on events and a lot more power during an overcurrent fault. Ignoring efficiency, heat, and everything else for just a moment, let's just appreciate how smooth the turn on characteristic is for this output voltage. It's nearly a straight line, ramping smoothly from 0 to 12 volts when the switch is activated. Huh. Y you know, this might sound a little far fetched, but I'd say, you know, if I, if I didn't know any better, that this data almost looks like there were a current source being used to charge a capacitor which is weird because we meant to demonstrate a soft start circuit which behaves like a linear current regulator. Huh, funny how things work out sometimes. Let's add another dimension to this picture. Let's compare how the current through our two switches look. Let's start with the fast switch and oof. That's a peak current of over 10 amps when that switch turns on. This gulp of current is pretty substantial probably more than we accounted for in our main power supply budget. I say this because our load typically sips a few hundred milliamps, not amps, and this surge of inrush current could brown out the power supply we're switching to the load causing currents to reset upstream. This burst of current could actually cause us a lot of issues, but at worst it could cause our switching components to be overloaded, damaging them and compromising the reliability of the design. Okay, so the 10 amp surge isn't ideal, but how does this look in our soft start circuit? In theory, this circuit should reduce the peak currents, spreading that gulp of energy out over a longer time. Wow, I don't know about you, but this looks like a very different picture. This looks like there's 250 milliamps flowing all the time. Now that's the current limit that we set, and we're charging up the capacitive parts of our load with that constant current of 250 milliamps. This is charging the output capacitance more slowly until we've reached our desired voltage. And as we approach that final voltage, the output current tapers off, causing our op amp to turn on the FET hard. This means that the steady state losses of our switching FET are still the same since the device will be fully saturated. Remember that word I used before, control? This is what control looks like. Isn't it just a thing of beauty? We can add as much capacitance on the output of the soft start circuit as we want, and the peak current won't increase. The charging time will increase, but the peak current won't. For contrast, with our hard switching circuit, the peak current for charging our capacitive load will continue to increase as capacitance increases, making a bad situation worse. What this means is that for small capacitive loads, the difference in performance between these two circuits is small, almost insignificant, in fact. If there's 10 microfarads of capacitive load, the impact of hard switching this to a voltage regulator will be pretty minimal. Therefore, in this case, the extra cost and complexity probably isn't justified. However, if we need to switch a large capacitive load, a soft switch or soft start circuit may prevent unintended features from appearing during switching events. Where this balance point resides for an individual circuit or system depends on many factors, and we'll need to consider each system individually. For our UPS, we have a nominal output current of 50 amps and over 2,000 microfarads of bulk on our DC rail. Therefore, we're going to need a soft start circuit to keep this inrush current reasonable. If this weren't done, the user may observe a decisive shower of sparks when connecting the batteries to our UPS. Since we added a hot swap controller to our system which provides this soft start function, this won't be an issue. The lack of sparks will certainly contribute to the niceness factor of our design. Sure, this probably isn't completely necessary, but this function will extend the life of our relays considerably, if nothing else. If there's not a lot of capacitance being switched as a part of a circuit, we can use a simple MOSFET power switch. This is cheap and trivially simple. 
If there's a lot of capacitance that's a part of our switched load, that may cause our inrush current to be too large, and that's when we'll need to control that inrush current to prevent component overstress or instability. There are a few options for how to implement that function, but overall it requires more consideration than a simple switch. Speaking of consideration, we still need to consider the safe operating area of our FET. The safe operating area of a FET describes, well, where one can use a specific transistor without risk of damaging the device. At a specific temperature, a specific quantity of power can be dissipated in the FET during a transient event without an issue. Here's an example, the FET that we selected to drive this soft start circuit for our UPS. We're using this as an example because we'd like to use the same FET in the soft start circuit as our DC to DC step up converter if technically practical. Control is great and all, and I love how the performance of this circuit looks, Safe operating area is one of the key considerations required before we can confidently take the schematic out of simulation land and put it on a board. This will answer a critical question. Can our transistor actually survive this turn on event? There is a critical graph that's always included in the data sheet for a MOSFET and it looks a little something like this. Now I know that graphs are fun and all, but this one wasn't just thrown in here to convince you that this FET is 20% betterer than the leading competing brand. This is a beautiful amalgam of data, and it exists to tell us how much energy can safely be dumped into this part before it transforms itself into a puff of smoke. This data has been shaped into a collection of curves, and each line represents how long the stress is applied to the transistor. In this case, they have data collected everywhere from 10 microseconds to 100 milliseconds, with data collected for every order of magnitude in between. On the x and y axis, we have current through the part and voltage across the part. For example, if our soft start circuit was switching 12 volts to our load, the worst case voltage for the safe operating area calculation would be 12 volts across the transistor. With this voltage stress considered, let's assume we were in a current regulating mode forever with a short circuit. So the pulse width is DC or steady state. With this operating mode, we should be able to survive this stress for as, as long as less than three and a half amps is flowing through the transistor. And what this tells us is that our current limit must be less than three and a half amps if we want our transistor to be able to survive a constant short circuit fault on the output of the soft start switch. If this were not enough and we needed to survive 10 amps of current with 12 volts across the transistor, this safe operating area data shows us that we must detect the short circuit fault and turn off the FET within around seven milliseconds to avoid damaging our transistor. That's an important piece of information. And this is the basic principle of safe operating area. How much power can the transistor dissipate in a transient event and for how long? In our case, we program the soft start controller IC to turn off the FET after too much power is dissipated in it. This is possible because this controller is constantly monitoring the voltage across and current through the FET. There's a small collection of passives around that controller that provides this monitoring capability. Our hot swap controller also automatically cuts out when the input voltage gets too low, preventing over discharge of our lead acid batteries. What did we learn today? We learned that switching capacitive loads too fast can cause excessive currents to flow, and that this current is called inrush current. We learned that using a MOSFET as a variable resistance to reduce the inrush current provides great control but causes power to be dissipated in the FET. This method is sometimes known as soft start or soft switching. Soft start is being used here to limit the inrush current in our UPS project as one way that we will make sure that we are always in control of the power flowing through our system. If you like what you saw today, subscribe to be notified of our future videos where we'll dive into our battery charging circuit and talk about considering safety when designing a circuit. I think that soft start is great and if you've blown something up by not thinking about inrush current or thought this video was great, let us know by hitting the like button on this video or leaving a comment letting us know what's on your mind. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching AE for everyone and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.